Show. You can follow us on Facebook at Jordan Maxwell Show. And follow us on Twitter at J Maxwell Show for any messages. You can always find the latest shows on our website. But if you want to make sure you don't miss a show, you can subscribe to the Jordan Maxwell Show on iTunes. So please support the show at no cost to you by doing your online shopping at Amazon. Make sure you click through the Amazon link on our homepage. Hello again. This is Jordan Maxwell. Thank you for coming back to the Jordan Maxwell Show. I want to thank everybody. Take a moment to thank you for uh, the great response that I've had from the audience and from so many people around the world uh, calling and, and emailing. And we're very uh, happy to see that uh, the program is being heard around the world. And I think it's an idea whose time has come to confront the whole world of lies and deception and manipulation that the religions have foisted on the people. They've thrown the uh, foisted it down our throats, our silly uh, political schemes and religious schemes. All of its business, it all goes back to commerce, it all goes back to corporations, money and control of the people. And uh, I hear all of this stuff about, uh, which I consider a bunch of stuff, all about the new age of Aquarius is coming in, it's going to be an age of equality and and enlightenment, and I'm thinking, no, no, the way the world is going, uh, we're going deeper and deeper into lies and deception. And, you know, every morning, every time you turn around, you're hearing on the radio or television, uh, well, the Mormon church is the fastest growing religion in the world, or Jehovah's Witness is the fastest growing cult in the world, or, or the Islamic, uh, you know, Muslims are the fastest growing religion. What it's telling me is that uh, the media wants to promote all of this silly nonsense because the powers that be over this world want you. They want you in the game. You, know, you, you can't have a, a big stadium and only 50, uh, 1,500 people show up. No, you need 100,000 people. You need get the whole world involved in this bullshit. Everybody's got to be a part of it. We're going to have a cults and religions and the, and the church and uh, Democrats, Republicans, and peace and freedom. And we got everybody in on this stuff. So they keep telling you in the news, boy, this religion, that religion is the fastest growing religion in the world. So I'm saying, what, wouldn't it be great if we had the truth being the fastest growing thing in the world? And the truth is, it's basically like a, a, a portion of the ocean that's filled with blood, and it's like sharks coming in for a feeding frenzy. That's all it is. That's the reality. That's the reality. It's a feeding it? frenzy down here. That's exactly it. All the, the people with power and greed and money, they want all the people to get in on this. Let's have some big wars and violence and bloodshed. I mean, it's, it's great for business. Great for business. There is no bad publicity. Let's kill some more and and uh, put it on the nightly news, and we'll all meet up at the Waldorf Astoria and smoke cigars tonight. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's um, amazing what's going on. And that's why I think it would be interesting on this program to look at what Nostradamus would have said about America. Because my friend here who does the reading, and you're all very much well aware of him, uh, I asked him to do a chart on America, on someone who would be born, what, uh, J July 4th? July 4th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, First Continental Congress, and uh, the birth time would be around 5, 10 p.m. I guess that's when they signed their documents. So consider that the birth of this thing called the States United on the American Continent. Good. It's not, so it's not United States Corporation. This is the original states uh, collected together and formed the foundation of what we call the United States of America. So what would Nostradamus say about someone who was born on that particular moment in that particular place? What I think is very interesting, when you look at a chart using the actual constellations, you see a dragon's tail. And that in general means stress. You see that in the constellation of Capricorn with Pluto there in the eighth house. Eighth house is the house of corporate money. You see a dragon's tail in Capricorn. That's the old established order. So that basically means the United States or states united on the American continent has a dragon's head in cancer. Cancer rules birth. Cancer has a lot to do with the baby. And that basically means the powers that be said... 
we're going to make damn sure we have a foothold in this new upstart and we're going to be pulling th the strings behind the scenes. So, you know, with the dragon's head for the United States and cancer, this is a young country. It's idealistic. It's vigorous. But one of the exalted rulers of cancer is Neptune, which is in the fourth house in Virgo for the United States. But right next to that Neptune, and that would be, you know, dreams, visions. It's a very idealistic country. It started out on an idealistic basis. But you have the ruler of that dragon's tail, Capricorn. Saturn, right there, right near that Neptune, which means that old established order said, we're not letting them break away too damn far. Uh-uh. This is a bad example for the rest of the world. Mm. Nobody just dismisses us like that with their newfound idealism and such, just throwing off the yoke of the old monarchies and such. That ain't happening. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure we've got a foothold there. That's what I see when I see a dragon's tail in the eighth house in Capricorn. And on top of it, there's Pluto next to that. Pluto has a lot to do with subversive movements and such. So there's some major players that saw what was happening on this continent. And they said, make damn sure that this doesn't get too far out of hand. Now, you brought that up and uh, you discussed the movie Zorro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, ABC, Disney? Disney, I Disney believe. Disney made the movie called Zorro, the latest one, only a couple of years ago, Zorro. And in there, the whole story in the movie that Disney produced was about how secret societies from Europe were quietly meeting late at night to plan the demise of California and ultimately the United States of America. Because they said in the movie, they said that this uh, whole idea of, of freedom and liberty and justice and, and freedom of the human being, we can't have that. That's ridiculous. We can't have that. The the old guys back home, back in Europe, they said, we can't have that. we got to do something about this. The old, the old establishment, Capricorn, Dragon's Tail and Capricorn with Pluto right there. I mean, you're talking old established order and the power behind the power. Yeah, well, that power behind the power is the Vatican. We're talking about Rome. We're talking about Caesar of Rome. And then when Caesar collapsed in the 5th century, and the Roman Empire went into the hands of what we call the Vatican. So... Uh, the Pope today is Caesar. He still sits on the throne of Caesar, the Pontifex Maximus, the old powers. So in my mind, the Vatican and the old guys in the Vatican remind me and Godfather are in the uh, and Goodfellows. They're the old guys back in uh, back in the Midwest, sitting in a little back room of a little Italian <clears throat> restaurant. But they are the bosses. Right. We don't care what the jury said. I want him dead. That's it. Period. And so the guys out there in Vegas and the guys out there in the big cities with all their diamond rings and all their, you know, that's all good enough. But the boss of all bosses, they call the shots, period. And you don't see them. They're back in the old because they don't need to drive around the fancy cars and all that silly stuff. They sit back and, and uh, nobody knows where they are, but uh, the players know who the boss is. And when the bosses say no, it's no. It's like a, like in the movie, Gov, uh, like in the movie Goodfellas. I mean, when the bosses back in the back in the Midwest say no to something, it's like a pope. Or what it was a a papal edict. It's like a it's papal. It's not bull. a suggestion. It's, this is like a papal bull. Exactly. So when the old guys tell you something, you better listen. And so that's exactly what's happening here in America. We think that we are free people. We can do whatever we want, and we're in charge. No, 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 no. There's some old guys from the old world back in Europe. They pull the strings, and they decide what America is going to be able to do and what it won't do. And if you've got a problem with that, they'll deal with you. It's called the papacy, the pope, and your, 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 your governmental system in America is based on the old Roman system. You know, and, and I'd, I've said this before, that the uh, the Capitol Dome in Washington, D.C., Life Magazine had a whole, a whole article on the Capitol Dome was based directly off of the Vatican Dome and that the design was taken directly from the Vatican Dome and that Caesar, in the article that talked about how Caesar, his seat of power in Rome, where did Caesar actually go every morning to rule the Roman Empire? It was in Rome and a hill, and a hill, and it was called Capitoline Hill, or Capitol Hill. And he would go up on Capitol Hill, and the article said that the term was that was used in the ancient Roman Empire is that Caesar was up on the hill. And why was he up there? Because he was the head of the Senate. 
the Roman Senate up on the hill. Well, my God, that's what we hear every night. Uh, up on the Senate, uh, the, uh, today, uh, the Senate up on the hill, and uh, President so-and-so was up on the hill today, and he said, that's Roman Catholicism. That's Vatican. That's the old order of things, the mafiosi. This is the power that is the power. And that's why Francis Ford Coppola and, and all these other producers have made movies like Godfather Three, which shows Michael Corleone in the Vatican, dealing directly with the Holy Father. And at the beginning of the, of the, uh, of the uh, movie Godfather Three, uh, the very beginning of the movie, and Michael is being knighted in the Knights of Malta in the church in New York by the, by the, uh, by the cardinal. And incidentally, the word pope uh, is, a, is a Latin word for your father, papa. So the pope, but what the word papa and pope means, it comes from an older word for a door. Well, of course, your father and your papa is the door to life. He's the one that opened the door to life to you. So papa or pope means the door. But you can't open the door without a hinge. So in Latin, a hinge is called cardinal, like <clears throat> a cardinal point on the zodiac or cardinal point on a map. So the cardinals are the hinges for the old man who calls the shots. And so uh, they make it happen. Whatever the old man says, that's what the law is, and they make it happen. So they're the... <laughs> The couples, they are the ones who make whatever the old man says, they make it happen. So um, that's why I've said you need to understand where religions come from, and, and America needs to wake up and find out we're not, like Dick Gregory said, you, you people like to talk about the land of the free and the home of the brave. You're not free or brave. You need to wake up and find out you are not free. If you think you are, go on out there in the public and shoot your mouth off about anything you want to. And what and I like the way you said it. Go out and try it. That's what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah. So go we're living it. examples. Yeah. We all get shot. Yeah, you know? if, you, if you end up in prison or get shot, well, it just tells you America's not free. And you don't have freedom. And I've often said that the reason why we have freedom of speech now, today, even though with the totalitarian dictatorship over America, the reason you have a, a modicum of free speech is because the government wants to know what you're thinking. May I say something about that? That's a very interesting word, that word government, because if you take meant and change the E to an I, it becomes mint. So to have a government, you have to have a mint. You've got to be coining something. That's right. But then, as you were saying, you get into theology. Theology is related to the word deity. So you have T's and D's being interchangeable, like the word to and the word dual. They both mean to. So government, government, control the money, govern mind. To control the money, you must control the mind. So yeah, they are listening. Well, that's they why, know that. The hearts and mind. Look at this is exactly why when you go into a bank and you open up a bank account, read it says that this, this account is backed up by the full faith and credit of the United States government. And I thought to myself when I first saw that, faith and credit? For Christ's sake, that's how I live, on faith and credit. No, no, the corporation called the United States, it says, backed up by the full faith and credit and it says, of the United States. Full faith, pun intended. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's faith. It's faith that, that, that you are who you say you are. And you have good credit, so therefore we'll, we'll let you do whatever you're going to do. But the bottom, bottom line is the United States is a corporation that operates on faith and credit. And you'd have to be a fool to believe this is actual money. Well, that's what uh, uh, George Carlin says. You know, in order to believe the, uh, you know, the American dream, you've got to be asleep to believe it. All I'm saying, I love this country. I love this. I love the United States of America because I grew up here, and I realize. And I and, and when I was growing up in the fort uh, in the fifties and sixties, uh, I loved the freedom. It never even occurred to me that I wasn't free. And so I loved the freedom to be who you are and think what you want and do what you wish. Uh, but, you know, so I love the country, and that's why I'm trying to do what I can to awaken people to take back their minds. So turn off the television. You don't need all of the entertainment. You better find out how this world works. You better find out how this whole scheme of things works in the universe and what the what astrology is all about and where we're going. Let's get back to this. And I'm gonna, eventually, I want to bring in my friend uh, Mike here because Mike and I have been talking about these things for years. And so... 
Uh, but before we get to, uh, into other subjects with Mike, uh, I, want, I want you to finish on the United States. If Nostradamus were alive, what would he say about America today, and where is it going? Well, we could talk about the transits. Right now, when you're looking at constellations, the dragon's tail for the United States is in the 11th house, which is Aries. And what's on the news right now? Aries rules war. So what's with this budget sequester, the military's taking some big hits in the budget. I mean, they're talking about grounding uh certain... one third. One third of the military, one third of the navy. Yeah. Yeah. And um... they're canceling certain missions. But in my opinion, you know, you have a transiting dragon's tail going through the constellation of Aries. Dragon's tail usually means stress, and that's in the eleventh house for the United States. So that's not gonna last forever. I mean, that dragon's tail will be out of Aries, oh, roughly around March 16th, 2014. But that, in point of fact, is what's happening now. So March 2014, we should be seeing some of the stress taken off of America. Well, the military, the military side of it. Then the dragon's tail is going to transit into Pisces, into the 10th house of the United States. Now, the 10th house is one's public standing and eminence. United States is not looking too good right now because of uh, the financial crisis. You know, I mean, there is such a thing called diplomacy, but I think what's going on behind the scenes is, you know, this funny money we're holding in reserve for these people over there, uh, it's a joke. You got to do something about this. Now, that's where the BRIC nations are coming in, Brazil, Russia, India, China. They're trying to start their own reserve currency. Yeah. Because the United States... It's got egg on its face right now in terms of its reputation around the world. And the financial crisis didn't help, and particularly yeah. the handling of it. I mean, you had Obama and Geithner going to China. Yeah, yeah. So that's saying something diplomatically. Yes. Now, let me ask you something, too, in relation to uh, the terms that are used on the dragon's head and the dragon's tail. Uh, what I get is that the dragon's head basically is the, is the, uh, the, the positive while the dragon's tail is a negative, and uh, but maybe you could explain that quickly, what the dragon's head and tail is, because all of the Orient has the dragon, and we know the dragons are big, and uh, the concept of dragons is big in the Oriental world. So what is the dragon? It's the dragon, um, the dragon's head in a chart, that's, that's also known as the north node of the moon. That's where the moon crosses the ecliptic heading towards the north pole. The dragon's tail is where the moon crosses the ecliptic heading towards the south pole. But what that what that means in general. The north node has a Jupiterian connotation, which basically means growth, luck. It's the place you want to be. Mm-hmm. The dragon's tail, in general, is very stressful. That dragon's tail will sting you if you get stuck there. A lot of times people, you know, wherever the dragon's tail is transiting... People intuitively think, well, there's a problem there. I need to be stuck there and fix that problem. And the longer you stay there, the worse you get stung. And that's the dragon's head saying, don't go there. (laughs) Go to the dragon's head. Okay, so where's the dragon's tail for America? In Aries in the 11th. In Aries is uh, war. And that's what's going on with America right now. There's a bit of stress in the military right now with the sequester and these budget cuts. It's and not cutting only that, the... but even in the even in the whole subject of war, we're not doing too well on the scene <clears throat> of war all around the world. We're out there fighting, but we're not doing too well. Right. Then that dragon's tail is going to transit into the tenth house, Pisces, for the United States. Which is what? Well, let's just. Before we get into what the Pisces side of it means, the 10th house just means our standing on the public stage. We're not looking too good right now. Yeah, and (laughs) and you're saying that we're going to even look worse later on. When that dragon's tail hits the 10th house of the United States? Yeah. Now, our credibility around the world, I think a lot had to do with the banking crisis, is pretty much shot. Yeah. And that's not going to be said publicly. No, but but uh, this is what's being said, you know, with the guys with the cigars in the Waldorf. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what else can you tell us about America? What what else is going on besides our crises in the military, Aries, and uh, and and when it moves, uh, what is it, two thousand fourteen, early two thousand fourteen? It moves. That dragon's tail will hit Pisces, March two thousand fourteen, and it's going to be there till about the thirteenth of April two thousand sixteen. What it basically means for America, it's, okay, you've done enough on the world stage with the wars and such. 
time to go home and take care of your own problems. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is going on. That's the general trend I see in these transits. What else can you tell me? Well, another thing, too, about America, just speaking in generally, when you go back to the NATO chart, 4th of July, 1776, you know, the United States has a dragon's head in cancer in the second house. So when you hear this saying, America's business is business, that is quite literally true because cancer does rule money in my book because cancer is ruled by the moon and the moon's tied to money. The United States does have a dragon's head in its second house. Now, they say that's the house of money, second house. That's the house how, how one gets their resources. So America is a financial power. That's in its natal chart. That is part of the destiny. And that's the um, destiny. America's business is business. Yeah. But also, too, with a dragon's head in cancer, that gets into cancer rules the breast and the stomachs. That gets into nurturing, feeding people. So it is true, too. America does feed the world. Yeah, that's true. What else What else is? Uh, can you tell us about America? <clears throat> Let me take a look here real quick, Jordan. I th America has Jupiter and Venus and the sun in the first house. And I think Ben Franklin had something to do with this. I think Ben Franklin was looking at the stars. Mm -hmm. And he purposely picked the time to create this thing called the States United on the American continent when the first house, you would have Venus, Jupiter, and the sun relatively close to each other, right in the first house. The sun, Jupiter, Venus, I mean, that's about as astrologically benefic as it can get. So, you know, America in a lot of ways, this is a, this is a great country has a great set of stars. It's a place of optimism. Also, too, with the dragon's head and cancer, cancer rules birth, Capricorn rules death. America, it is. It's a young, vibrant country. This is the place where it's happening. That right. makes sense. Yeah. You know, this is, this is quite literally the new world. But the old world, that dragon's tail and Capricorn, they're making sure the kid doesn't get too crazy, gets a little too wild and drunk, and has too much sex in the back seat. Yeah. So <laughs> that, keeping an yeah, eye on it. Right. So the old world order, we're talking about Rome, we're talking about the old banking families of they Europe. They may damn sure get in there before it gets too far out of our hand and get yourself right into the sinews of this country. Get right into the foundation of it. I, we don't care what it takes. Got to have 700,000 people dead in the Civil War. Get it done. Mm-hmm. That's right there, Saturn, the ruler of dragon's tail, right there in the fourth house in Virgo. Fourth house means home, area of the home. This is get right into that country. Now, once again, when you're talking about the stars, you're talking about everything under the sun. This, is, this gets into something with the California Constitution, where if you look at the 1849 Constitution, it says right in there, it's right on the Internet, on the government website. The 1849 California Constitution says nothing shall be money Banks are illegal. Associations may be formed for the holding of gold and silver. But other than that, there's no authority to form a bank. They're basically saying banking as we know it is illegal. Then you get an 1879 constitution and that all changes. Yeah. Now, you don't necessarily require gold and silver. Here's the point of that, Jordan. When you look at it in relationship to the United States, in my opinion... That has to do with this dragon's tail in Capricorn and its ruler, Saturn, being right in the fourth house of the United States. And that's basically the powers that be say, you ain't walking away from us that fast. Yeah. You're not walking away from the old world that fast. We're getting our cut and we're going to do whatever the hell we got to do to get right into the sinews of your country to make sure we get our damn cut. And that's that. Yeah. Which uh, which makes sense, you know. You know, it's a young country, and we're talking about freedom and liberty and justice, and we're going to be, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And the old guys in the old country say, no, 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 you better back up, son. You know, you're talking money here, you're talking business, and for two thousand years we have run the world in Europe, and the Holy Father says, no, no way, you're not going to dance around and be free and and do whatever you want to do. You better go back and talk to the old guys in the old country first because they're the ones that are going to cause you trouble if you if you get out of line. That's what's happening today. America has got all kinds of entanglements with Rome. I mean, you'll see uh, George Bush bowing down and kissing the ring of the Pope in front of everyone. Well, what does that tell you when a, when a president of the United States bows and kisses a ring? I mean, and, and, and um, 
Every time you see the Pope coming over to America, all the politicians run out there and they're shaking in their they're shaking in their boots and they kiss the ring, and call him Holy Father and all. That. What does that tell you about America's leadership? We're crawling on our knees to the old man. Well, what I would say about that in relation to this chart, the United States has a dragon's head in cancer in the second house. The ruler of cancer is the moon. And the United States, if you assume a birth time of 5, 10 p.m., has its moon in Aquarius in the ninth house. Ninth house is the house of publishing. It basically means getting the word around. Aquarius has a lot to do with revolution, freedom, respecting the rights of everyone, and it's the moon, the United States moon. This country cannot help but just have revolutionary ideals. The old world doesn't like that. It's not even something, it's just the nature of this country, that the way they do business over there just makes us look bad. They're young, they're beautiful, they're vibrant, and then we're a bunch of old hags running the show over here. And people are losing their respect for us because they got a better party going on over there, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. With the moon being an Aquarius in the ninth house, just the very idea of something called the States United on the American con continent, where you have these independent sovereigns and the people are free and they're the masters over their government. That's a threat. That's a threat right to the core. That's exactly right. People need to understand that. And from the old world's power, that needs to be stamped out. It just, you know, it's like the old fairy tales of Beauty and the Beast is Snow White, you know, it just mm -hmm. kills Cinderella. That's it. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's exactly right. The evil right. witch, the evil witch, kill the young, beautiful Cinderella. Yeah, and the old guys from the old world order back on over in Europe and the old dynasties of Rome and the old banking families like the Pisos family and all these old... Um, the banking families, the Metichis and the uh, and all these other families, they're not happy with a young bunch of upstarts kids over their America and, and turn around and America's goddamn uh, very prosperous and doing stuff all over the world. And so the old guys back in the old country say, who do these kids think they are? They don't show any respect. They don't come over here to show no respect. And so, like you said, yeah, so if they're going to start this country and, and run this country, you better get our people over there and make sure that the, you have our people inside, you know, to make sure that these uh, kids don't get out of control. So send over our conspirators, and we, we will slowly but surely slip in behind the scenes and, and inf infiltrate this new organization called America. And that was a big issue. The United States, states united on the American continent, has a dragon's head in cancer. Cancer, in my book, rules money. And you've got a California constitution saying you, you don't have any authority to form a, form, uh, send out banking charters. You can form associations for, hold, for the holding of gold and silver, but you're not forming any banks. I think this is important to make, uh, make everyone aware on, in street language. The 1849 California Constitution strictly says you cannot have a bank in California, period. That's what it says. You cannot form a bank in California. Today, California is nothing but banks. So that tells you something about how the old order, the old guys in the old country, they came in and said, we don't give a damn about your new laws and about your America and land that are free and home of great brave bullshit. Uh, we're going to continue to run this world the way we've always run it. And so you can have your America and have all your big, bright ideas, but we're still going to control the money, and we're ultimately we're going to control you. And, see, this gold and silver issue, I mean, that's in the federal constitution. It's in the California constitution. It says you can form associations for the holding of gold and silver, but you can't form banks. People can verify that online. That's because, in my opinion, the United States had a dragon's head in cancer. They knew a thing or two about real money. Mm -hmm. And they were idealistic about it. Cancer. Cancer is ruled by the moon. The moon's in Aquarius. Cancer's exalted rulers are Jupiter and Neptune. You know, you actually had something called a relative degree of uh, financial freedom. Yeah. See, I just but, think it's interesting, too, in the world of symbolism. Gold is uh, a golden for the sun, and silver is silver for the moon. And the, with the gold, sun's gold and the moon's silver. Take out the L out of gold, and what do you get? God. Yeah, that's right. Fascinating stuff. So 
what in uh, in two minutes? Give me the whole story of the America, where it is and where it's going in two minutes. Where it is and where it's going. Let's see. Well, uh, right now the dragon's head's transiting through America's fifth house house in Libra. I mean, I think behind the scenes there's some people definitely taking a look at this crisis, uh, saying, you know, we gotta <laughs> we gotta have to pass some laws to keep these this 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 casino banking system we have. We're gonna have to do something to fix this. And then the dragon's head, come November 2013, is going to transit into Virgo, right into the fourth house of the United States. And the dragon's tail is going to be in Pisces in the tenth house. What this basically means is the rest of the world saying, your credibility shot. Go home and fix, fix your own problems, but out of our business. Mm. That's it. Okay? You gave it an eight-year <clears throat> run. Okay? You had w multiple wars going on. They had your whole banking system collapse. All right? We don't believe you anymore. Pack up. Go home. We're going to do our own thing. Butt out of our business. Take care of your own problems. That's what I see in this chart. That's my opinion. That's what I see. Yeah, good. So that, that takes care of America. Uh, it's got some problems now. It's going to have problems in the future, but it was a great country. I say was. It still could be, but... Uh, uh, Something's got to be done, and I always say that if, if we're going to bring back freedom and liberty and justice and, and decency and honor, it's going to have to come from on high. It's not going to come from the people. It's not going to come from the population. It's going to come from something higher than us. Thank God that, uh, because like the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Well, right now, America has no vision. We don't know what's going on. The people haven't been told nothing. So. That's right. So we don't know anything. We don't understand anything. We can't read. Uh, and it's all because the powers that be from the old world, back in Rome, they don't want. I mean, look what the church did to the Renaissance and, and the people of the Renaissance with the Jesuits coming in and killing people and murdering people because they were reading and studying and the, uh, uh, the astronomers who were talking about the earth is not the center of the whole universe. Well, the, the church put them to death cut their heads off. I mean, you should see some of the stuff that happened during the Inquisition. Well, that gets into that term, government, government, govern the mind. Yeah. I think what you're saying there substantiates that what I'm saying there. They want to make damn sure you're not supposed to think that way. That's exactly right. Because when you start thinking that way, that f threatens our money supply. That's right. Um, Martin Luther, I remember when the magazines talked about Martin Luther King. They said, as long as Martin Luther King was talking about the blacks as opposed to the whites and all and how the whites are persecuting the black people, that's fine. But when he started talking about the money, uh, the haves and the have-nots, and how the money is, is, con is, is controlling all the people who have nothing, now you're talking about money. You're not talking about the black. We don't give a damn about the black and white situation. Cry all you want. But if you're talking about money, now you're talking about the banks and the paychecks. Now they got to whack this guy. they got to get rid of him because now he's messing with the money. And that goes back to money, moon, money. And, uh, and that goes back to uh, Rome, the printing of money up on the hill with Caesar. So I'm just saying, you know, the people in America, they better wake up and find out what this really is really going on in Washington, D.C., and and the hill. The incredible story of betrayal. Anyway, let's move on to a different subject. We don't have a whole lot of time left on this program, but uh, I do want to introduce uh, uh, a man that I'm going to have on the program as much as I can, as much as he can, um, my friend Mike. And um, Mike and I have been talking about religion and cults and and, you know, so many times they say, you know, I wish the people of the world really understood religions and where they've come from. And, and uh, especially uh, Mike has been interested in um, the Mormon church, Joseph Smith, that kind of thing. What can you tell me about that whole monstrosity we call the Mormon church? Question before we roll. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Um. I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you that. We can do anything you want. Are you sure? Because, you know, what? as I was driving over here, uh, I was thinking of um, issuing a challenge. Say it again? Issuing a formal challenge. 
Ooh, my wow. challenge is this. All you people on TBN, and you soothsayers, and you people of the cloth, and those who send in $100 and $150 to get pieces of the nail of the cross, and you get your fifty nine ninety five shawl of Christ, I challenge you all, every one of you, to come forth and heal. I challenge you today to come forth and heal the sick. Otherwise, you're nothing but a charlatan, soothsayer, phony baloney bullshit. I challenge you, Michael Anthony today challenges you today to come forth with your prayer shawls, your Benny Hens, your Jake, all those people. You know who you are. And I challenge you to come forth today and meet me here. And I will take you to Children's Hospital and I will take you to the sick. And I want to see you heal them because you're nothing but a con. You're nothing but a fraud and a fake. That's exactly you're right. You're putting down my friend. <laughs> you're putting down what he has to say that I've read. But now it's time to put up or shut up. I'm coming to you. I'm coming right. in your face. I'm coming to your congregation. And I'm saying, you know what, you holy rollers? I want to see what you have to say. And I want to see what you can do. So you come here. This is a formal challenge to you. You come here with your sixty nine ninety five prayer shawls and your $100 Bibles. And I want to see you do your healing. Yeah, I want to see what that. you can do. Let's do that. I think he just did. did. You, were you rolling that? Yes. No, no. no. He was rolling that. <laughs> it, it's rolling. Yeah. What I'm amazed with in America is going to all these churches and faiths and, and so forth, how people can believe. As Jordan says, he doesn't want to believe in anything. He wants to know the truth, as I do too. But how can people fathom the idea of a Christ, supposedly a Christ, dying on the cross and then coming to the Americas to it? to visit and to set up shop here, supposedly. And from that, after we break it down, Joseph Smith finds these golden plates in the Hill Camorra. He goes there three times in a row, three years on September 22nd, on the equinox, of course, and the plates are slippery. And when he goes to grab them, they go through the dirt and he cannot grab them. The plates are slippery. But on the fourth time, the angel Moroni said, well, you must bring your wife. So he brings his wife, she turns her back, and miraculously, the golden plates are in his hands. Now he takes these golden plates, he brings them home, he can't believe what he has, so Oliver Cowdery shows up, which is his right-hand man, he takes his two stones, puts them in his top hat, and he's able to break down or publish the Book of Mormon through this. I find it fascinating that people can believe in something like that, 15 million members strong, and there's people actually believing in this story. Yeah, I know, but that's why when you go to church, any Christian church, they will ask you, how long have you been a believer? Oh, he's like, are you a believer? They don't say, are you a knower? Do you know anything? But they, I'm sure, no, no. If you're a Christian, you are a believer. And so it, it implies that the whole Christian religion is a belief system. You have to believe something. I don't want to believe. I want to damn well know. I mean, like, like I said, the CIA and the and FBI are set up by the U.S. government. They don't want to believe nothing. They want to damn well know. Uh, mm. bring out your proof, show me the for sure, so I know something for sure. So that's why, uh, you know, I, I, when I look at the Mormon church, I'm not talking about the Mormon people, I'm talking about the corporation, the church itself, and where the teachings come from, and where Joseph Smith, who was he really? What was he really doing? Well, we know he was a Mason. He's yeah. a third degree. They were actually called Mormon Masonic Lodges when they first That's opened. right. Well, I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses <laughs> and Seventh-day Adventists and, and uh, Charles Tess Russell used to always, I used to, many years ago, when I was running around doing research on different cults, I went to all the IBSA meetings, the International Bible Students Association, which was Charles Tess Russell, who started that back in 1870. And all of the meetings of the International Bible Students of Charles Tess Russell's organization, which became known as Jehovah's Witnesses, but all of them were always held in Masonic lodges. And the, and the symbols for the IBSA, uh, International Bible Students Association, was the cross and the crown and all the symbols of the Knights Templars and Knights Hospitallers. Uh, basically, all of these are organizations like the Seventh-day Adventists and, and the Christadelphians and the Worldwide, Worldwide Church, Church of God, God yeah. and Herbert W. Armstrong. All of these are Masonic orders. And as I've said before, Christianity is Masonic. You would not have Christianity if it wasn't for the Freemasons. So if you are believing in Christianity, you better find out where it came from. It's from the Masonic order in Europe. 
from and Charles Tess Russell, from William L. Miller. All of these people brought all of this stuff over from the old world into America. So Christianity is a Masonic order. Judaism is a Masonic order. Islam it comes out of the Freemasonry. Hmm. Very interesting subject of how our religions really, where they came from and what, what they really are. I'm hoping on the next show we could get into the Illuminati. Yeah, that's a hell of a subject. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get into a lot of interesting stuff here and break down where all of these different religions and cults, and as you said, challenge them to, for the first time, to show us what, where you've come from. What do the words mean? Where, where is all of the stuff going? When you look at the billions and millions of dollars that religion rakes in off of the people, and today the American people, religiously speaking, spiritually speaking, are the most ignorant people on the face of the earth. You, you can ask them anything you want to about religion and theology and spirituality. They have no idea in the world. All the different religions, all the different Christian religions, they all differ from each other. You know, I, 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 Jehovah's Witnesses, they're, they're, the whole operation in Jehovah's Witnesses are the elders in the congregation. The elders in the congregation, we are, uh, you are told, is that they speak for God, period. When, yeah. they, when they're the elders I speak, speak for God, too. Yeah. And He's so, right here, <laughs> sitting next to me. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so, but the funny thing is, is okay, so, so at the elders in this congregation speak for God, and so you're talking to them, and they represent God. So whatever they tell you, that's the, the God's, God's word, word for, for you. Yeah. Now, unless, of course, you go to the next city and go to a Jehovah's Witness congregation there and ask them the same question, they got a totally different viewpoint, a totally different... Well, of course, it's like going to gypsies. Of course. You go to five different gypsies, <clears throat> you pay your money, each one is going to give you a different fortune. Yeah, of course. It's but just, each one speaks same... for God. Each one speaks well, for God. Of course they speak for God. That's why I'm not talking about the word, challenging you over the word. I want to see you do it. Oh, well, I want I want to see you see you do what you say you can do when you have all these people and you're healing them on the channel and the guy's coming up and he's paralyzed you put your hands on him and he stands up I want to see you do it here come down here I challenge you to come down here and do it yeah they're not going to show you can bet on that. oh they're going to show yeah they'll show they have to show because I'm going to say it again and again and again and again you're nothing but a fraud and a phony all of you unless you come down here and do it in front of us or we'll go with you. We'll take you to Cedar Sinai, anywhere you want to go, any children's hospital, because there's babies born blind, without limbs, whatever. Yeah. yeah. We'll take you down there. You could put your hands on. You could ah, bah, bah, shaka, bah, 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 all that stuff. And I want to see it happen. I want to see you do it. I have a young movie star friend of mine who was very successful. Has own television shows and, and co-star with some of the biggest names in Hollywood. And when he was out of work. He came to me and, and I called him and said, well, how's, how, what's going on with you? And he said, well, I got a sensational job. He's now making 500 bucks a day and I'm working every day. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm traveling with this minister, a Christian <laughs> minister. And, and he says, and uh, I'm supposed to be one day I'll be blind and I can't see and I, and I get my sight back. The next, the next a couple of nights, we're in a different city. I, I broke my arm, and I, now I can. And he says, so I'm making 500 bucks a night, every night. And he said, I, I, and, and he said, I don't even have to, uh, I don't have to read lines. I'm not under pressure like you're on a movie. It's like Elmer yeah, Gentry. Yeah, it's yeah like, Elmer, like Elmer, Elmer Gentry. So I just love it. I just, I cripple up there, and I'm walking on crutches, and then he heals me, and everybody's happy, and I get my 500 bucks, and... Uh, and he said, but the problem is, and I said, well, you're working now? He said, no, no, that gig's over. And I said, why? And he said, well, we were in one city back in Louisiana, and, uh, and, and everyone saw me. And then we went to a different city. But some of the people that were in the audience in the one city happened by chance to be in the other city, and they saw me with a different ailment. I was blind the one time. Now I can't walk. And he said, so that blew that, and so I had to get out of town. He had to get out of town. Yeah. yeah. So he said, I, I just I cut out. Well, let me ask you a question. Why are these people, why are they still on TV? They're making millions and millions and millions of dollars, and you could see that they're frauds. Of course. But yet the people buy into it. Why is that? Why? That's an incredible question. That's something I want to take up on the next program because that is a very important issue. People can see these people. Uh, the world can see their frauds. It's overwhelming in your face that they're lying to you and, and playing you for a fool, and it's all entertainment, Hollywood entertainment. 
and yet the people of the world love it. The people can't wait to give their money to these charlatans, to these criminals. And as my FBI friend in San Diego told me, and I've said this on the program before, I had an FBI guy in San Diego call me many years ago in my office in Glendale. And he said, Jordan, uh, we're watching everything you do. We're listening to you. And he said, but your government doesn't consider you to be a threat. As long as you're just talking and not advocating overthrowing the government or guns or anything like that, uh, we don't care what you say. You have a right to talk. And he said, but if you're going to have any problems, this FBI agent told me, if you're going to have any problems later on in life, it's going to come from the church. Because this, the church we know at the FBI, we know the church in America, the whole entire superstructure, what we call the church, is a criminal organization through and through. With that kind of money and power and political persuasion in, 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 in government and the billions of dollars that they rake in, you've got to know this is organized crime at its best. And we know it. And they know. And he says, so when you go after the church, you're going after organized crime at its highest level. So you better watch out what you say about the church. Well, what does that tell you about religion in America? Anyway, uh, I want to talk about this in the next program because there's a lot you need to know that's going on in religion and government around the world. But especially uh, am I interested in religion because this is the bottom line on the darkness that has covered America. The church itself has promoted lies, deception, fraud. My God, how many times do you have to read about all the pornography and all the sexual uh, stuff going on in the church? I mean, why do you think they have um, uh, something in the Catholic Church called altar boys? You put a boy on the Keep altar. You know, why is he on the altar? Like Abraham, you know, he would put his son on the altar to, to kill him. Uh, we're talking about child sacrifice. You're talking about a lot of dirty stuff going on inside the church. So we'll uh, we'll get into all that stuff later. But I want to thank you again for being being with us and supporting the program. I want to thank you also for any and all contributions, uh, because the contributions help the program and help me, so I can pay the the people that help while bringing you the show. Because I don't have anything. I don't own anything. So it's very difficult to get the show done without paying people to help me. So I want to thank you for those who have considered to uh, to contribute something and to donate something to the program. And I want to thank you for being there and tell everybody else to listen to the program because this is one show you're not going to hear anyplace else. So this is Jordan Maxwell for the Jordan Maxwell Show. Tune us in later. Good night. And please support the show at no cost to you by doing your online shopping at Amazon. Make sure you click through the Amazon link on our homepage. All right. Thanks for listening and join us next time. See you next time.